This is one of the youngest artists that I have in this gallery, Ben Joyce, and he's from Spokane, Washington. Came highly recommended by one of my clients, uh, mm -hmm. who I respected, and I respect her opinion. Yes. And as you will notice tonight, his work wrap, has baby. absolutely gotten the most attention of any, any other artist that I have in the gallery. So oh, really? I think that speaks highly of the artist and the median and the subject matter that he's chosen to represent in his art. And that's a very mature <laughs> progression in his work that speaks uh -huh. way beyond his years. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. it's recognizable to people as well. Uh -huh. And uh, this is your own gallery, yes, but you have a lot of experience in selling art and so forth. I started out in contemporary and then moved to a more uh, middle of the road traditional gallery that where I was for 16 years. Uh -huh. uh, my choice with this gallery was dependent on this perfect location, but also I felt like it was time with this economy to give people value in what they're buying. I mm -hmm. think the, the, my client base is buying, but they want to know that they're getting quality in their work. Sure. And in that way, they're, they're getting the tactile, they can feel it, they can see it, it's not easily reproduced. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they want to, to feel like they're getting their money's worth and in every way. Mm -hmm. and, and here, I think they have that assurance mm -hmm. that, that they are uh, definitely choosing well and wisely. Explain this new technique, please. Yeah, so really, you know, this piece is the island of Manhattan. Uh -huh. We have Central Park here, and the highlight is uh, basically the Jacqueline Onassis Reservoir, uh, you know, in the middle of Central Park. And so, you know, really it's the, uh, the style is abstract topophilia, and, you know, the it's... <laughs> It's uh, meant to, to recreate a landscape to where people can identify with the shapes in the area and expand the piece beyond what it is and inject it with their own life and histories and emotions. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, this is more kind of a confined chaos with what, you know, the city goes through every day, uh, but for some, some uh, reason it all works and so now I've seen some of the other paintings and around here that's kind of a new technique I've not mm -hmm. seen that before yeah you know what I wanted to do is bring in kind of a, a different life into the piece and really try, try to represent the life of the city and, uh -huh. I mean there really is you know so much going on I that, see you know, sometimes people uh, forget about the beauty of the landscape, you know, and this way you can kind of combine the two to where not only do you get the busyness of the city, but then, you know, the outline of the city. All of the commerce, the boats, right. yeah. the ferries, right. the comings and the goings, but the, the land never changes. Right. It's yeah. solid. Exactly. And you can yeah. always depend on that. Golden Gate Bridge is this one? Uh, this one here. Oh, up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So which bridge is this? That's the Bay Bridge. The Bay Bridge. Yeah. We're both Republicans. Uh, and we have a little difference of opinion than the Democrats have on the health care bill. But I'm going to try to not be partisan. Sometimes it slips out. But we were elected. Once we're elected, it's our obligation to serve all of our constituents. If we don't, when people call our office, we don't ask what party they belong to, we ask what their problem is, okay? But we do have honest differences on, on the health care. And, and just for the lawsuit, what the lawsuit is dealing with is the fact that for the first time in our history, a law was passed requiring a person in this country, a citizen, to buy a product. I think that there's a real problem that that creates, a mandate on an individual to buy a product. Now there was a lot of beating up of insurance companies,
But actually, the ones I've talked to are pretty, uh, whatever they say, they're kind of happy. But now you're going to have to buy their product. As Buck said, the amount of debt we're accumulating has never happened before. 43 cents out of every dollar this government spends is borrowed. In California, we have 12% of the nation's population. What is the percent that we have of the nation's welfare population? 32%. We get more than 50% from within the taxes of those who pay personally from 144,000 people. Because we punish wealth creators and we reward individuals that are going to take more assistance from government. I believe in helping somebody in a time of need, but not somebody that's going to live their, their whole life in the process. So when the Fed gives money to banks at uh, 25, uh, a quarter percent? And sometimes right now, percent, yeah. right, and the banks give you mortgages at 6 percent. And we've got a housing issue, we've got a uh, recession. If we do force, now the banks need the reserve, in order to exist, all right? If we can force the banks to give a 3% primary mortgage loan with an average mortgage of $300,000, it would save the average person $600 a month. That's a stimulus, that is. all right? That creates jobs, because yes. now I can buy things. And, and here's the best part. The federal government, now I can write less off. So they get more money from me in taxes. The banks, rather than have one person default at 6% and one person succeed at 6%, now you've got both people succeeding at 3%, so now you don't have a housing issue anymore. This is simple mathematics. Why is there a bill proposed for this? Why do we keep getting these crazy formulas that anyone who has a job really doesn't qualify for? There's no way we can defeat Obama with amendments or parliamentary measures. He is a fascist. He's not a socialist. He's a Somebody needs to say he is a fascist, and we don't allow fascists in the United States. Now, the second idea on this is he needs to be impeached for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know whether either of you support the Russia's present process to impeach him based on his most recent actions, where we are protecting the opium production in Afghanistan, which is funding the Taliban, and then proposing to fight them at the same time. So we are apparently fighting and funding the Taliban simultaneously, which is a treasonous action by this president. LaRouche is saying, get out of Afghanistan, burn the poppy fields as we go, and impeach the president of the United States in the process. Good question. You can answer that right now, too, okay? <laughs> What do you think about gates in the military? What, why can't we get tort reform done? Yes. First, gates in the, in the military. Uh, our committee is working on that, and um, there, there's a proposal to uh, to eliminate the don't ask, don't tell that has been so successful now for a number of years. And what we've asked is that they don't do anything until they do, until they find out how it will affect readiness, how, how it will affect enlistment, how it will affect retention. In other words, I want to know, and, I, and I've, I've talked to the four-star generals, and I said, you know, when you go in a room with a bunch of uh, privates, corporals, sergeants, and say, what do you think about this? They might get a different answer than a sergeant going in and asking. You know, uh, I want a, a true survey, understanding of how all of those things will be affected in the military before something is done just for political expediency. Number two was uh, tort reform. Um, Tort reform, the, the trial lawyers are a major part of constituency of the Democratic Party. Democrats are controlling everything in Washington. They will not let them do anything in the way of tort reform. We tried to, we tried to do that. We're in the minority. We don't have the votes. 